Welcome everyone to this talk uh, about uh, 10 years of DevOps, where are we today by Karthik Gaikwad. Uh, we're glad to have him join us today. Without further delay, I hand it over to you, Karthik. Thanks, Hari, uh, and thank you everybody for coming to my talk. Uh, good evening. Uh, this is a quick talk on uh, 10 years of DevOps. Um, see. So quick agenda, we'll go through, uh, you know, a history of DevOps, uh, some of the significance of that, uh, what the evolution has been, so kind of where we are today. And then uh, the most important part of this talk is uh, five practical learnings that you can take uh, back to your own work or, uh, you know, your own, um, uh, yeah, your own place of work. Uh, so you can kind of use some ideas that I have in here. So my name is uh, Karthik Gekwad. Um, I am the head of cloud native engineering at a company called Verica that does uh, chaos engineering for Kubernetes and also for Kafka. Um, so kind of interested in that space. My my history is I used to work, uh, worked at a lot of uh, large enterprises, a lot of startups as well. I've uh, been in industry for a while and uh, I just like to build um, build things. So that's kind of where I come from. Um, and I also like to teach and build community. So um, I live in Austin, Texas, uh, and I help run Austin uh, DevOps Days Austin uh, Container Days and our local meetup called Cloud Austin. Uh, I'm also the chair for the All Day DevOps track uh, for the Cloud Native track for the All Day DevOps conference. Um, and you might have seen my LinkedIn Learning um, um, author or LinkedIn Learning stuff, Learning Kubernetes. And so let's get into the heart of things, right? Uh, the, let's do a quick history of DevOps. Uh, most folks have probably heard of this before, but uh, you know, DevOps kind of began in 2008 at the Agile conference where um, Andrew Clay Schaefer was talking about uh, this idea of Agile infrastructure. Uh, and Patrick Dubois attended the Birds of Feather uh, and he was really interested in understanding what Andrew's thoughts were. Uh, and then sure enough, you know, it's, uh, it's a random thing that you kind of do at the conference. And so Andrew didn't come to that, but later on they talked at the conference and they were really interested in the ideas of uh, you know operations and development topics and how they kind of come together. Um, also in 2009, uh, John Alspa had the famous uh, 10 deploys per day presentation at Flickr, and uh, you know everybody in the in the audience was really kind of wondering like, wow, they're actually deploying an application to production like not just one time every day, but like 10 times. That's pretty amazing. Um, but you know like what what is what is DevOps really? So there's many definitions. Everybody argues about a definition, but a practical one that I really like is uh, DevOps is the practice of uh, operations and development engineers uh, participating together in the entire service lifecycle uh, from design uh, through process, development process, and then finally production support. So this is from the Agile Admin blog, uh, the, one, the, the thing for uh, what is DevOps. Um, the other way people really like to describe DevOps is uh, using the pillars. So I think uh, 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 Bachical Loop on Twitter uh, came up with this, which is uh, the, the idea of comms or clams, culture, automation, uh, lean, measurement, and sharing, uh, the five different pillars uh, of it. And uh, at least like when, you know, 10, uh, 10 years ago when this was pitched, that was the intention. Like that was where people were coming from. That was the mindset. But you know what? What has it really evolved to today is probably what we're more interested in. Um, and so today, if you kind of look at uh, you know DevOps in general, um, you know out of the out of the five pillars, it feels like automation and measurement um, are the two most primary things that everybody talks about when they say DevOps. You know, you ask somebody like, "Oh, you're a DevOps engineer. What do you do?" Oh, you know, I work on uh, uh, the automation part. So you know, I, I use Puppet or I use Terraform or something. Uh, and then the other thing they might say is, yeah, we are very heavily into, uh, you know, measuring all the things. And so out of the five pillars, uh, automation and measurement have, uh, you know, definitely got, kind of gone past uh, culture lean uh, and sharing. So a question that also comes up is like, how come everything seems like I thought the whole point of all of this was culture? Uh, you know, what happened along the way? Um, and so, you know, I, I put some Dilbert comics in here because uh, I know it's Dilbert is old school, but I still like to read Dilbert a lot. Um, and so, you know, we're all engineers uh, and, you know, DevOps is more of an engineering thing than a business thing uh, at this point. And so, um, you know, ideas of automation, ideas of measurement are like easier problems to solve than, you know, people problem. So, you know, this this thing talks about like, why do you, why did they pick a vendor or whatever? but 
just from an engineering mindset, it ends up being like an easier thing, thing to solve. Um, also, you know, organization culture is hard to quantify. So you might work um, at different companies uh, and every company has a different kind of culture from uh, a large scale organization kind of thing uh, or large scale organization. So, you know, you're not only trying to influence like one person, you're trying to influence a whole organization. So it ends up being, you know, a tricky kind of problem to solve. And, you know, you, uh, when, when sometimes when we're faced with hard problems, we try and pick battles that we can win. And so a battle of automation and measurement might be a simpler battle, uh, to kind of take, uh, take on versus, you know, trying to challenge a cult organizational culture. You might not know, you know, where to start and how to, how to go about, how to go about that. Um, and also change is hard, right? So, uh, we are all, uh, we are all wanting, you know, change in our organizations and we're all wanting to do things in a different way, but actually getting to that way might be really difficult. Uh, there's a lot of like inertia. Uh, there's a lot of processes that might have been put into place for, you know, one reason and could have evolved into something completely different. And now, you know, no one really likes it. Um, but, you know, regardless of all the reasons, the, the, the way to change might end up actually becoming like pretty hard to do. So, you know, um, you know, to kind of summarize, our, our DevOps definition has changed and we now kind of focus on specific subset of colors. Um, and one thing I, I uh, and this might be a personal opinion, but like, I think one of the problems that we've forgotten is that uh, with the idea of DevOps, it was operations and development coming together and working hand in hand. Um, and it's more of a people problem than really an alignment uh, kind of issue. So this is, you know, I, I put the slide in here as a joke kind of slide, but uh, today, like most companies are trying to sell you like a solution for DevOps. So it's, you know, DevOps in a box, basically. So, you know, where where do we go from here? Um, I've been in industry for a little while uh, and a lot of folks end up asking me, um, you know, and it, there's there's no harm in this, uh, you know, where where do we start? Because um, in, uh, in the US, most companies might be doing, having this idea of DevOps and, you know, might be doing it in a specific way, but there's uh, the world is not just U.S. centric; it's the whole world. Uh, and some parts of the world they're still trying to understand. You know, okay, where do we start from from a transformation point of view? Uh, and you know, where do we start? So let's talk about that real quick. Um, a couple of recommendations that I give is, uh, you know, first, if you're coming from an engineering perspective, or if you're on the business side and trying to understand what how the engineering is trying to kind of doing. Uh, things on their end, um, you know, talk to the business folks. So, you know, your companies, uh, you know, I might really like Kubernetes, right? But my company is not a Kubernetes company. It's actually doing something else. Um, so business does not stop. So it's important to understand the business perspective of all of the engineering stuff that we do. Um, it's, it might be very different. And then uh, the business always wants to go faster. So one thing that they look for, for, for a partner from the engineering side is like, Hey, can we actually push code out faster? So, you know, from the Dora state of the, uh, state of DevOps report from last year, you know, uh, companies that were high performing were 46 times more, uh, had 46 times more frequent code deploys. Uh, and you know, they were, uh, 2700 times faster to recover from instance and things like that. All of those things need engineering kind of work, but they're actually, you know, business initiatives and they're partnered with business and they're not like, an isolated thing. Um, also, if you're, uh, you know, trying to, uh, if you're on the engineering side and you're trying to like come up with a modern modernization strategy, uh, DevOps uh, should be one of the plays that you have from a modernization modernization perspective. So I put this chart in here. Um, you know, uh, when when I first started in industry, um, Agile was really big. We still built, uh, you know, uh, three tier applications. Like for for me, it was three tier. But it's really end here. Uh, virtual servers were a thing, and then um, actually, my my first company that I started at, we had our own data centers worldwide. Uh, you know, today uh, from a development point of view, we're we're talking about DevOps. Uh, we are talking about microservices from an application point of view. Uh, we're talking about containers and packaging uh, things inside of containers when we're shipping products. Um, and most of the world has uh, started to evolve to cloud, if not already evolved. Uh, from an infrastructure point of view. So um, if, if you're thinking about, well, where do I, you know, bring DevOps in, into this picture, it kind of falls into not just not just the DevOps portion over here, but 
really all of the things across the right. So, you know, you, you do need to kind of have a strategy to go to microservices to, you know, uh, run containers uh, or even go to the cloud. It's very different from running infrastructure in your own uh, data center. So to kind of like summarize the last two points that I've made, uh, it's it's really all about alignment. So you, it's important to have alignment between uh, the technical uh, folks in your organization and the business folks in your organization. Because um, I made this mistake really early on, where from a technical point of view, we were like, okay, yeah, we we should uh, we should really use DevOps because we need to be able to deploy, you know, uh, multiple times in a day, make that easy, and all of that, and then. Uh, we delivered a solution, but the business was like, well, we don't release uh, daily. We release once every three years. So I'm really confused why uh, you guys spent all this time to be able to do that. Um, you know, so that's that's kind of a lesson learned for me personally. And also alignment um, from a from a technical team perspective, because from a technical technical point of view, all of us have really good ideas and we want to uh, do things in specific ways. So it's important to bring alignment uh, between between internally in your team and even in your like organization. So, uh, you know, when I worked at large enterprises like Oracle, we had to bring uh, alignment not just in you know my technical team, but also in our whole like cloud division. So that alignment stuff is really important. <clears throat> and don't forget that at at its heart, uh, DevOps is a people problem. So. Uh, to, in order to to effectively introduce DevOps into your organization, you need to keep your teams actually working together. Um, so I put this put this picture of uh, you know this is actually an interesting story to read about folks uh, the Amish folks actually building a house. Like everybody has their own task and they're kind of working on you know uh, building building a house. Like the the roofer guys know exactly how to build the roof. Uh, the guys inside know how to build you know the side of the house and. Some of the guys who th that are doing the framing are really good at framing, but they're kind of all working together in order to, you know, build that house uh, in a timely manner. So let's take a quick stab at kind of where DevOps is today, what we're going from a future trends perspective. Um, one of the things that I think we hear a lot today uh, is, you know, DevOps is becoming, uh, we're not hiring DevOps engineers, we're hiring SREs, and it feels like, we uh, took some paint, uh, we had this DevOps poster, we repainted it and made it SRE, but really SRE is uh, a subset of DevOps. So, you know, make sure that uh, if you're uh, in an organization and you had uh, operations people and you're trying to rebrand, uh, you know, you might rebrand into SRE, that's totally okay, but make sure you're actually thinking about the, the entire uh, comms lifecycle. So, you know, it's culture automation, measurement sharing, uh, SRE in this perspective might be uh, the importance of it is, you know, availability, availability, latency, performance, et cetera. But, you know, your the mindset has to be kind of a DevOps mindset. Cloud native is also becoming a big thing. Uh, you know, I'm kind of been squarely in this for the last, uh, I think, uh, five or six years now. But, um, you know, the, the this it's a new paradigm that's uh, Cloud Native Computing Foundation is kind of the um, you know, kind of the stewardess uh, of all a bunch of different projects. Uh, but, you know, if you're trying to break it down, most of it is kind of based on Kubernetes and a container technology. Uh, it has a really rich, rich landscape uh, and a huge community. If you've ever been to KubeCon, I know KubeCon India happened uh, earlier this, this year. Uh, there's one last year as well. And I think there was, uh, you know, 3,000 people or something, something came to that. Um, but the the drawback of having a big community is it can become you know very complicated to uh, navigate. So this is uh, this is actually the old chart for all of the different projects in the uh, in the CNCF and different products in the CNCF. It's barely hard to read. Um, whenever I look at this, uh, you know, I turn into my two year old who uh, screams a lot, uh, and so I think the um, the, you know, the analogy is like, yeah, you, it's, it's impossible to read, uh, everything in here. So it is kind of like a scary thought kind of coming into it. There are some easy ways. Uh, we can, we can talk more about that in uh, my, uh, I have another presentation coming up in a couple of days and we'll talk more about making this a little bit more digestible, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a journey. Serverless is also becoming a big thing. Uh, there are some uh, companies that have gone directly from cloud native, uh, or instead of cloud native, they skipped over into serverless. So it's a it's a brand new execution model where if you're just running everything in the cloud, 
the provider manages your, your resources and you are responsible for just your code. And also observability is becoming a big thing too, where uh, this is more applications that become more distributed. So in the past, everything was one machine. Now you have like applications kind of distributed, um, you know, all over. Uh, so the idea of observability is to understand like system behavior from system outputs. So inputs and outputs. So you know how well the internal states of the system can be inferred from, you know, external outputs. So this is kind of like an idea that's come along. It's come a long way, but it's required because we are going into a more uh, disputed world these days. Uh, and also, yeah, like we, that's a new era in uh, testing security and database. Um, it feels like everybody is shifting left uh, and trying to uh, trying to do the thing that DevOps did a few years ago. So uh, the, there's like new ideas and dev test ops and dev sec ops and, you know, dev DB ops. Um, my, my only recommendation that's uh, on this is, you know, there's, uh, these are groups that historically were outside looking in. So instead of saying, oh no, this, you know, DevSecOps is a terrible idea. Don't do it. Uh, and you know that might be DevOps itself. Like, uh, welcome them in and try and figure out how you can align together. So let's do five key takeaways. I think I have a minute left, uh, so I think it'll it'll work pretty well. Uh, so these are these are my opinions and like five uh, takeaways from this presentation. Uh, I would really recommend. You know, to me, DevOps is all about collaboration. So make sure you understand. Uh, what the other side is doing in your in your company. So uh, we're all partners in this. So it's not like one one person is uh, kind of working on something specific. Um, understand your business. Um, they eventually actually pay you what uh, what they pay you. So you it's important for you to actually understand what your business is doing. We're not you know just uh, there to uh, maintain a specific instance of box. Uh, it's important that you're uh, you know you're actually responsible for your business. Um, if you're a technical person, use architecture to your advantage. Uh, sometimes when you, we're deep into these uh, squabbles inside of our companies, you know, you can actually bring out an architecture diagram and try and get everybody aligned. Uh, I use this trick a lot uh, in, you know, where I work. Okay, how does this map back to architecture? Uh, it works out really well. Um, always be learning. Um, one thing about, um, you know, or like I put the corollary in here or you might have to get it, find a new job. Uh, once you stop learning, it feels like a part of you stops doing things. Um, so always be learning like uh, DevOps, Cloud Native, all those things have like new ideas coming into play. So it, it gives you a greater opportunity to be learning new things or how to improve on process. Um, and finally, you know, be empathetic, um, especially with this pandemic right now, uh, you know, work from home and uh, you, know, you know, people having kids and everything. Uh, I feel like technology will always be there but people might not. Um, so it's important to be empathetic to your teammates, your organization, the folks that you work with, folks you work for, um, because I feel like we're, we're kind of all solving problems together. So it's important to understand the human aspect of things. So I think that's uh, the presentation that I had. Thanks again, Karthik. This is very, very useful.